Well, welcome back to the Techno Communism Conversation. I'm going to uh, t- uh, talk a little bit about um, the revolutionary um, uh, cybernetic socialist project in 2024, 2025, 2026. This thing that I uh, call techno leading, the thing that will lead in short order, in short order, I believe, to techno communism. Um, and um, um, I guess I, I was talking to a friend of mine um, uh, just earlier earlier today, and uh, we were talking about a, a, a pretty famous person that we both had occasion to meet in the past. I was. Um, uh, this uh, person, his name is Ben Gertzel, and he is um, uh, a person who has a, um, uh, uh, projects in, that are fairly consistent uh, with uh, this revolutionary cybernetic socialist outlook, um, but um, he does not, um, in my view, um, uh, have the uh, have uh, the kind of operation or kind of worldview that could really help him uh, close the deal there and um, um, so I'm going to describe for a moment why I believe that is uh, why that is the case and this is a person who um, I had kind of I guess you could say a man crush on for many years (laughs) Um, um, and a, a person of the rare distinction of a person who I would say that I've met in real life he was also a kind of uh, political philosopher who influenced my thinking. Um, I can scarcely think of anyone who has influenced my thinking more than this person, uh, Ben Goetzel. It's sort of the same reason why I read um, um, pressers from Ray Kurzweil every year or so, even though um, I regard him as um, a, a false prophet, a head of a fascistic organization, <laughs> essentially. Um, and um, um, the the problem of uh, Ben Gertzel is on a similar similar scale. Um, um, ben Gertzel goes on a lot of shows, um, and often uh, will uh, kind of I've, it's a recurring theme. I've seen him talk about uh, authoritarians, um, the problems of uh, open source technology, let's say, uh, uh, being used uh, um, by authoritarian governments. Uh, this uh, word authoritarian government is entirely meaningless, right? He's not talking about France, the U.S. being the worst, the U.K., and he's talking about enemies of France, the U.S., and the U.K. The U.S., for example, has a military-industrial complex of about a trillion dollars a year. It's the world's worst polluter. It protects other super polluters. It's a goddamnable thing that should not exist. It's a, the uh, acme of authoritarianism. It also has... Um, uh, imprisons approximately uh, 25% of darker skinned people living on this continent um, in the course of some point uh, for some serious um, amount of time in the course of their lives uh, for chicken shit, right? Um, what are, what are, why are um, uh, Native men's uh, and African men's lives being cut short? Because this is a white supremacist country. Why are they being imprisoned? Because this is a white supremacist country. Why is the Native uh, life expectancy a half of that of the European American life expectancy because this is a white supremacist country because um, but this uh, um, the actually existing fascism of this world is not something that offends uh, Mr. Goetzel it's uh, a theoretical um, a, a theoretical uh, authoritarianism that's very very selectively interested um, in things um, um, that are not particularly uh, fascistic and very, very selectively disinterested in the things that are particularly fascistic. And this isn't something that he did like three or four times in, uh, you know, shortly after the Patriot Act or something in 2004 or something. It's something he's done consistently. And somebody who says, you know, I worked for, <laughs> I worked in D.C. for a long time and I'm cozy with intelligence agencies, you know. Um, uh, so, I say this all uh, not to uh, say that Ben Gertzel is an arch-criminal of humankind. Um, I say this uh, uh, to um, contextualize where we are in 2024, 2025, 2026 in the process of building um, 
a revolutionary cybernetic socialist um, a set of projects and outcomes. So um, if you um, if you go to the singularity.net uh, uh, channels or pages, um, the, the, you'll see things that would seem to be uh, talking about this. Right? Uh, but um, I'm not convinced um, that these this group of computer programmers um, are going to build the thing that I describe on this show um, effectively um, using AI agents of a certain strength uh, today, um, uh, strong enough, artificially generally intelligent enough uh, that a network of such could be built into a proxy hive mind, uh, empowering users and ultimately all world citizens um, uh, to um, work on projects of tremendous impact and ultimately build a humane and sustainable economic system, a ne the minimal necessary condition for a humane and sustainable world, not the one that we live in where humanity is slated to die in some decades. Um, and um, so is somebody who um, has that relationship, that seeming relationship with the military industrial complex, who basically is a pro bono uh, CIA asset, saying CIA talking points, Every time they talk about um, revolutionary outcomes, it's a half a dozen CIA talking points peppered in there. And that does, that, Mr. Gertzel is not unique in this respect. Um, every technologist does this. Every um, uh, technophile, uh, public-facing technophile, uh, does this. Every AI pundit uh, does this. Um, this is the poison of anarchist thought relative to scientific socialist thought, uh, because um, they're uh, very, very selectively interested in upholding uh, Western fascistic institutions and very um, disinterested um, in actually being anarchic. <laughs> it's a uniform thing. Um, uh, uh, so um, I'm going to uh, change gears now rather than um, attacking somebody who I kind of want to be friends with. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, I, I believe that um, the, our environment is crying out to us, however, um, um, uh, that we have to uh, make significant uh, changes and um, be this revolutionary uh, force, this uh, cybernetic uh, socialist revolutionary. Inequality um, is at uh, the worst that it's ever been by many measures. Um, uh, the possibility of human life continuing is by far the worst that it's ever been. And, um, um, but a new era does lie within our grasp, and uh, a, a certain kind of thinking, uh, systems uh, thinking consistent with cybernetic socialism is important here. Uh, systems thinking is a powerful tool uh, that will help us build um, this necessary revolutionary cybernetic socialist polity um, that we need uh, for humankind to survive. And you might say, oh, I don't know that humankind is going to go extinct. It might just be the case that many billions will die. And I don't know who those people will be or where or when. Um, but uh, consider that those many billions dying will be um, uh, billions of darker-skinned people in the global south uh, dying for the sins of the European, European-American, principally a person of European descent. And those sins are ongoing. Uh, you are not... Uh, Shell Oil still has a headquarters. It hasn't been burned to the ground yet. Um, uh, the military industrial complex still has a headquarters, uh, many, many headquarters. It hasn't been burned to the ground yet. Uh, you're not uh, doing those things. You're not even doing the things that would be easy to do, uh, like stop driving cars um, or um, and take mass transit or bicycles or e-bikes or stop consuming animal products, the second worst cause after um, fossil fuel products. So you're not doing any of the things uh, that would uh, um, exonerate you uh, from being this um, uh, essentially genocidal maniac uh, who's killing billions of people in the global south in 2050 um, uh, so that you can have um, a bunch of bullshit that you don't need uh, today. Um, and um, 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 this, the old ways uh, must be destroyed. Uh, and that's not an easy thing to do. Uh, this uh, fragmented, uh, profit-driven uh, set of fascistic systems, uh, they are failing us. They uh, exploit workers. Um, 
uh, plunder resources to the point of annihilation, leave uh, millions of people uh, without the things uh, that they need. There are approximately a billion people on this planet um, who, in the course of most of their uh, time of being alive, uh, do not have uh, proper water, food, or housing. They die a short number of years later. Uh, is this a world where there is intelligence? Is this a world where it's possible for us to say that uh, superintelligence is emerging? I don't see um, uh, humanity as a p possessing a basic uh, a set of skills. Um, and, but that's uh, not because of those billion people. It's uh, because of these fascistic institutions that you, a uh, Westerner, hold. Um, uh, so we have to consider this uh, new paradigm, uh, the revolutionary cybernetic socialist and ultimately uh, techno-communist outcome, uh, and one that sees uh, the economy uh, uh, not as a battlefield for extracting resources on behalf of the ruling elites, uh, but as an ecosystem that we must uh, treat with care, um, uh, where every element is interconnected and where um, the economy exists uh, to provide services um, and necessaries and safety to human beings, not for the extraction of, of private wealth at the expense of those things. Um, and so um, cybernetic socialist uh, systems thinking allows us to see the big picture and um, it teaches us uh, that uh, change in one part of the system uh, ripples uh, throughout the world. Um, uh, the polar vortex um, <laughs> in, in, the, in the North Pole uh, reversed. Uh, it, it completely reversed in, in the last few days. And um, um, meteorological phenomena of a stranger and stranger kind because human activity is going uh, to be a part of your life in the years to come. Um, and that, um, that kind of human activity must be stopped, must be stopped at any cost. Again, why is Shell Oil uh, still, uh, still standing? Why does that still exist? Why do these uh, people who have um, uh, polluted so much of this continent, uh, like uh, 3M and uh, Dow and DuPont, why do those things still exist? Some of those uh, had, um, um, uh, had to pay uh, damages uh, for um, making uh, water undrinkable uh, for much of uh, the world, um, but uh, the damages uh, are nothing compared to uh, the, the resources that they still have at their disposal as a for-profit operation that should not exist at all, uh, much less an ecocidal uh, for-profit operation. That's, uh, these, these, these people sh should have their heads chopped off, right? <laughs> You're going to die if you don't do that. Um, and um, um, I don't think that people really put any of this in its proper context. Um, this, uh, these ecocidal Americans, uh, these upholders of the military-industrial complex, these upholders of ecocidal corporations, so these people would generally be uh, called uh, conservatives. What are they conserving? They're killing themselves. They're supporting people who are killing themselves and they're killing everyone else. If uh, someone um, held a gun to your head, said they were going to kill you at an appointed time, uh, and you in turn killed them, um, that would be self-defense. That's the situation you're in right now. Um, um, uh, so uh, consider then, of course, advanced computing. That's what this uh, cybernetic socialist, um, uh, as described here, is uh, meant to uh, suggest. Uh, there's uh, other definitions of this term that deviate from that slightly. Um, uh, imagine a world where advanced computing is no longer a tool for ecocidal elites and uh, a senseless bourgeois, uh, but serves the people. Imagining uh, that uh, it optimizes resource allocation, uh, minimizes waste, and ensures everyone's needs are met. Um, and how can that happen in 2025 and 2026? Well, um, we have um, um, agents AI agents that are close to being artificially and generally intelligent uh, that you can download in the course of this year uh, to, your, to your computer. And I believe that um, a path uh, to the cybernetic socialist world is uh, to begin to um, uh, build uh, the specialized versions of those open source agents which are editable uh, into things that are able to uh, work together uh, with uh, human oversight and build a group of users uh, tasked with um, um, 
addressing uh, grand uh, human challenges of the kind that I've alluded to here and on many other shows. Um, and I think that uh, this super intelligent proxy hive mind um, uh, uh, will ultimately become effectively the superstructure of uh, our civilization um, in the ways that um, uh, the uh, products of industrial capital and the nation state and uh, scientific socialist uh, industry and nation state uh, were in the 1800s and 1900s. Um, and uh, so we have to uh, guide the development of this uh, thing, uh, the, this uh, cybernetic socialist polity and uh, this super intelligent entity and in ensure that it serves the common good. Um, um, uh, and the, in doing so, we can begin to um, imagine a worker-owned and um, highly representative, uh, democratically controlled um, uh, economic system uh, where advanced computing uh, is able to serve as a kind of uh, a conductor and, of course, a massive um, uh, labor a force multiplier, um, harmonizing uh, production and distribution. Um, and um, uh, regional uh, workers' councils within uh, that network uh, will be able to uh, set priorities. Uh, citizens will have a say in resource allocation of um, every kind. Um, and uh, advanced computing um, in the form of this uh, super intelligent uh, collective uh, will effectively um, and very efficiently execute uh, these necessaries. Um, uh, implementing such a system is a daunting task, um, um, and um, uh, but with foresight we can create uh, better things and uh, create new um, sectors of, of significance. Um, and um, the, uh, the the concept uh, that um, uh, bourgeois technologists often refer to uh, the um, um, uh, the uh, jobless apocalypse. Uh, things along these lines. Uh, it's a, a fool, foolish, foolish idea uh, because um, we already exist in a world that's been influenced by jobless apocalypse um, uh, decade after decade after decade, uh, right? Um, there was a time when um, uh, human beings um, uh, predominantly worked um, as uh, uh, farmers, field laborers, um, and um, uh, those peasants' uh, jobs were automated away. Those peasants uh, were not given any security, uh, by and large, and except for a few notable exceptions. Uh, they did not become independently wealthy uh, by this process. Uh, they were tossed aside as private wealth um, um, uh, became uh, enriched by um, uh, that, that full automation of, of farming sectors and other sectors, which are highly automated. Um, and um, uh, uh, so uh, people who talk about um, uh, capitalists who talk about job loss are um, deceptive uh, people, and generally unserious people. Um, we need to um, uh, analyze uh, this more honestly from the scientific socialist perspective and uh, uh, consider um, um, uh, 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 real, uh, real solutions uh, to this. Um, um, this um, this set of concerns really uh, shouldn't have that much to do with work. If you have a massive uh, a workforce multiplier as this uh, superintelligence network or advanced computing generally is, uh, then the question is um, ending precarity and scarcity uh, for human beings and building systems uh, to match uh, these strengths. Um, and so uh, you can imagine a world where um, uh, health care is a basic human right, housing is a basic human right, uh, basic needs are um, uh, met, uh, all manner of, of services are, are um, offered as free goods, including, um, including not just primary education but uh, secondary tertiary education um, all, all the world around. This is something that by the standards of uh, 1925 uh, were all achievable. Uh, except that fascists um, um, uh, uh, prevented those things from being achievable, namely the United States and uh, and um, uh, Western uh, Europe, the North Atlantic. The um, I was uh, listening uh, to an audio book about um, um, 
uh, about the Soviet Union um, as I fell asleep last night, and so I learned uh, some new facts about uh, the uh, uh, so-called Russian uh, Civil War, which was, of course, um, um, the attempt by these uh, uh, North Atlantic uh, powers to uh, stop uh, people's revolution uh, from taking down a monarchy, uh, one of the worst monarchies ever to exist, in fact. Um, and uh, so um, people uh, in great number came from the United States in the years uh, between 1917 and 1923 approximately um, and other countries a great amount of resources um, uh, were sent uh, by these imperial powers uh, to prevent these very things that I just described a moment ago from occurring um, housing becoming a human right health care becoming a human right now fast forward to 2000 and uh, 24, uh, I believe we are in a world where um, uh, not just healthcare could become a human right, but uh, radical life extension could become a human right. Everyone could live as long as they want uh, because of emerging biomedical breakthroughs and uh, this advanced computing superstructure. Um, and um, uh, but that's not going to be done under capitalism, where in the uh, most AI advanced country, by certain measures, the United States. There is not even a public health service, much less a public health service that treats aging as a disease. And as a result, 100,000 people's lives are cut short in North America following the racist pattern that I described earlier. Um, um, uh, so I would encourage you uh, to um, uh, let this uh, scientific socialist uh, truth um, um, uh, sit and consider the wisdom of the uh, cybernetic socialist the systems thinking that I've described. And um, if we as a people are able to do this, uh, we will begin to harness the power of advanced computing and build uh, the techno-communist world that we deserve. Uh, and a, a future of collaboration, sustainability, and shared prosperity awaits us if we have the courage and insight uh, to do this. Uh, let us claim this uh, new world together. Um, I have one or two other notes I was going to do, but I think I'll end it. Uh, thank you for your time.